If you've been following this channel a while, you know that the pressure cooker is one of the most valuable tools in my kitchen. Not just for the speed and the convenience, but because it's a lectin fighting powerhouse. You see, pressure cooking actually knocks the lectins out of some, but not all, of your favorite foods, making things like potatoes, tomatoes, beans, safer to eat. How? By cooking them out of your food at a high temperature, significantly higher than boiling. That's because pressure cooking actually raises the boiling point of water. So foods cooked in a pressure cooker cook faster at a higher temperature. Plus, pressure cooking forces liquid through food more efficiently, so lectins are actually forced out. But that doesn't mean you should run out, buy a pressure cooker, and use it on everything, because there are a few foods that simply can't be fixed by pressure cooking, likely because the lectins in them are so strong and they can't be broken. So what can you pressure cook? And what foods should you avoid, pressure cooked or not? So, good news, chili lovers, pressure-cooked beans are A-OK -okay on phase three of the Plant Paradox program. I still soak mine in a few changes of water first, and I make sure to pressure cook them until they're completely soft. Uh, 20 to 35 minutes in my pressure cooker, but it'll vary based on what you're using. And sometimes I'll pressure cook them a second time around. And beans aren't the only food you can pressure cook to kill off the lectins. Another great one, white rice, especially white basmati rice from India. But when it comes to rice and any starchy food, consider this. One of the most beneficial parts of rice is the starch, resistant starch. It's the stuff your gut bugs eat. And the best way to help that starch develop is actually pretty simple. It is something you can do whether you cook rice in a pressure cooker or in a pot on the stove or in a rice cooker. All you need to do is cook your rice a day in advance. Then refrigerate it, put it in the refrigerator, and then heat it back up when you're going to use it. This really boosts the gut bug friendly starch content. And yes, that goes for potatoes too. Another great starchy food you can pressure cook to get rid of lectins. And in case you're wondering, if you're pressure cooking potatoes, you do not have to peel them first. But honestly, I'd peel them anyway. The peel gets kind of funky when pressure cooked, and it's got extra lectins, so better safe than sorry. But it's not just those starchy carbs that can benefit from pressure cooking. Let's talk nightshades. You know, peppers, eggplant, tomatoes, everybody's favorite. That's right, you can eat tomatoes. And with a pressure cooker, you do not have to peel and de-seed them first, which is great news if you find that tedious. Heck, you can even pressure cook yourself a delicious pizza sauce to put on a cauliflower crust with some buffalo mozzarella. It's a great way to make sure you don't feel deprived. I mean, who could feel deprived when eating pizza? And nightshades aren't the only veggie that benefits from pressure cooking. You can pressure cook squash, too both summer and winter squash. That puts zucchini back on the yes list and Italian squash, pumpkin, acorn, butternut, and dozens of other squash. And again, you don't have to peel and de-seed them before pressure cooking, which I think you'll agree makes meal prep a whole lot easier. So that's the yes list. But what foods can't you pressure cook? Well, let's start with everybody's favorite, and I'm sorry about this, but we're talking about wheat. Yes, that means wheat flour, breads, pastas, cake, cookies, anything made with wheat. A pressure cooker just doesn't stand up to gluten and other strong wheat lectins. So even if you find an amazing recipe for pressure cooker lasagna, if it's made with wheat noodles, it's a no-no. And wheat isn't the only grain on the not even pressure cooked list. Unfortunately, grains like buckwheat, barley, rye, and even oats, even gluten-free oats are off the limits. So no pressure cooked oatmeal, please. Now there's one other thing everyone asks about pressure cooking, commercially raised meat. 
You know, I get it. Grass-fed meat is expensive, so everyone's hopeful that pressure cooking is the answer they've been looking for. But you know how pressure cooking doesn't kill the lectins in wheat, barley, oats, or rye. Well, those are key ingredients in the food that most commercially raised animals eat. And the saying goes, you are what you eat, and you are what your animals eat. And the animals that eat diets loaded in lectin-heavy wheat, barley, and oats, their meat is packed with those lectins, lectins that don't get knocked out by pressure cooking. So throwing a bunch of grain-fed short ribs in the pressure cooker is not killing the lectins, unfortunately. Which is why you should always, always go from grass-fed meat. It's going to help our environment. It's going to help our world. You're not going to be consuming antibiotics and you're not going to support industrial farming, which tortures our animals. Why are we doing all this? Because I'm Dr. Gundry and I'm always looking out for you and your pressure cooker. <laughs>